Hey everybody, it's the Ares1999 coming back at you with another video. Last time we went over dungeon exploration, and this time we're going to go over forming a party. So it's finally time to put all these lessons together and actually start to play the game. You're going to, of course, need some people to play with. I recommend a group of about four to six people. Games will usually get hectic if there's too many players, but usually just aren't as much fun with too few. The average D&D group has five people. That's four players and then the DM. And as I mentioned all the way back in the first episode, you can find everything you need to play online, including players. And Reddit is actually a really good way to find people who are looking to play. I'll link to a subreddit in the description that's really good for finding people who are looking to play. Now, once you have the players, you will all need to make your characters. If you want a balanced team, it's probably not wise to have everyone be a barbarian. Single class parties can be fun for a short adventure, but will often prove disastrous for an extended campaign because you'll lack the diversity that you'll need to get through a lot of different trials. Now, to help keep parties balanced, I've split the 12 classes into four groups. There are heavy hitters, supporters, agile warriors, and mages. Heavy hitters are barbarians, fighters, and paladins. They can deal a lot of damage and can take the big blows. Supporters are bards, clerics, and druids. They're really good at casting buffs and healing spells, and they're likely to have the skills that can really help during some kind of NPC interaction. Agile warriors are monks, rangers, and rogues. They're good at moving quickly and attacking mysteriously. And then mages are sorcerers, warlocks, and wizards. They have access to very powerful magic abilities, but don't have a lot of defense or health. Sometimes they're referred to as glass cannons because they can do a lot of damage output but can't really take a lot back without breaking. As you can see, each group has its own specialities that each one of the classes in it can perform. In a party of four, having each player use a class from a different group is a good way to balance the team. Now, once you've set up, there could be a number of ways for your characters to meet in-game. It may be that you all have known each other for some time and as such have decided to adventure together or perhaps you're strangers getting to know each other. The most common way for this to happen is that you're all just happen to be in the same place at the same time to trigger the quest. Like you're in a bar where a man bursts through asking for people to help him because his son was just kidnapped by an evil wizard or something. Each character decides to go on the quest for their own reason, perhaps just to help out or perhaps to find treasure. And they all just decide to work together because they happen to be going on that quest. And a variant on this is that you all work for the same organization that happens to put that team together for a mission. This style is easier to work with than having you guys know each other already because you don't need to worry about what base information you have on each other. Because unless one of you has some kind of reputation, they're all just strangers to each other. And how well you know each other is an important thing to RP. You may be best friends in real life with someone, but your characters may just be casual acquaintances and as such would treat each other differently. Now, party life isn't always going to be a party. Some of the characters may not get along with each other. This one time I was DMing a group and we had a rogue who was constantly stealing for everyone. The party found it annoying, but it was a good role play, but he especially went to heads with this bard who was an officer of the law. The bard confiscated his thieves tools, almost arrested him, and then ended up accidentally killing the rogue. That's another story that I'll get into at a later time. But then I let the rogue come back as a ghost so we could keep trolling everyone. My point is that you don't always have to get along and sometimes it's more fun when you guys just go at it with each other. But that doesn't mean you should be constantly fighting with each other. Listen to each other's players. The longer your characters adventure together, the more they'll like each other. The party will eventually become like a family. And well, that's pretty much all for now. Next time we're going to talk about how to get the most of your gameplay experience. Until then, don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell me what you think down in the comments section. Bye!